All right, so one of the scariest moments in a molecular biologist's life is the morning after a ligation reaction. We come in, check the incubator, and you look at your plates to see if anything grew. Now, you're going to be comparing, in most cases, a control ligation, which had no insert, to a ligation that should have had all the components. And what you're hoping to see is that your control reaction has nothing, and your ligation has a ton of colonies. But more often than not, the reality is that they're going to look really similar, and you're going to have some background, and maybe they'll be twofold, maybe they'll be one and a half fold as many colonies. So you need a way to find that one colony that worked and you need it rapidly instead of doing 40 mini preps. So the solution is colony PCR. Now in order to perform colony PCR, you're going to need four things. An epi rack with your PCR master mix, PCR tubes, one for each sample, sterile culture tubes containing the growth medium and antibiotic of your choice, and finally, of course, you're going to need the plates, the bacterial plates that have the colonies that you're going to examine. So the advantage of colony PCR is that you can profile 30, 40, 50, however many colonies you want to pick very rapidly in a couple of hours instead of having to do an individual mini prep for each colony. So the idea behind colony PCR is that you're going to take one colony and look for your insert of choice. Now, to do this, the first step is going to be picking a colony and transferring it into the PCR tube. So to do this, I use just normal 200 microliter tip. And then you want to swipe one colony. It's very important that you're getting only one colony. OK, now with the colony on the tip of the pipette, you want to go into the bottom of the PCR tube and basically rub the tip all around the bottom of the PCR tube. You're trying to smear some of that bacteria into the PCR tube. Okay, now once you've sufficiently rubbed the tip into the PCR tube, transferring the bacteria, you're gonna take that tip and transfer the tip into one of the sterile culture tubes. Now these tubes each contain LB, and in my case, ampicillin, because the gene I'm looking for is in an ampicillin-resistant plasmid. Now, one of the most critical parts of colony PCR is being sure that you're careful about labeling tubes. It's very important that the PCR tube is labeled as well as the culture tube, and obviously they correspond. In the end, you're going to be running a gel using the PCR samples and going back to the LB culture tubes to get your sample. So you want to be sure that they actually correspond to each other. All right, so after you eject your tip into the sterile culture tube, you want to go back now to the PCR tubes and add 20 microliters of your master mix. All right, so once you've added all of your master mix to each of the tubes, you're ready for PCR. So after your PCR reaction, you want to analyze each sample by agarose gel. Now this is going to allow you to rapidly tell which samples had an insert and which samples did not. Looking at the results of the agarose gel, we see our positive controls on the upper and lower half of the gel as compared to all of our 24 colonies that we looked at. What we can see is that we have two positives, sample number 6 and sample number 21. And so instead of going back and mini prepping all of the colonies we picked, we would only mini prep 6 and 21. Although sometimes we'd like to think that molecular biology is often elegant and things work on the first time, in reality we all know sometimes it's brutal and you have to brute force through it. And colony PCR is a great tool for getting you through those tough times when you're looking for a needle in a haystack.